This is a cat I drew this morning. Now, if you think this is ugly, wait until you see what I've created. I don't have the skills or the experience to be an artist, but I'm going to do whatever it takes to make a VTuber model that works. Now, I've never done any form of rigging before, so I have no idea what I'm getting myself into, and on top of that, I don't even have a drawing pad or a tablet. But you've seen my cat, I don't think it would have made a difference if I used a mouse or a drawing tablet, so let's just get to it. The first step was to draw a rough sketch. Initially, I wanted to make a model that had longer hair, but I don't have the skills to make that happen. So I went for a design that had shorter hair with square bangs, and then it looked like I pulled out Timmy Turner's buck teeth and attached it to this girl's forehead, but I kept telling myself that it's fine, it's fine, it's just a sketch. Right? Here, I was trying to make her head a bit bigger, and ugh, that neckline, ugh. Whatever, it's whatever. For the eyes, I knew I lacked the skills to detail them with a glamorous and sparkly aesthetic, so I had to do something that was much more simpler. At first, I was just gonna leave her eyes as simple dots, but then I thought, maybe I should at least detail the eye sockets a little bit. I took some inspiration from Shunsuke Surato and decided to attempt to make Senpaku eyes. If you haven't read her series, I would highly recommend it, it's pretty wholesome. I tried to add some details to her cheek, maybe some blush, but she just ended up looking like Pikachu, so I gave up on that. And with that, I was finished with the first sketch. Now, the next step was to add another layer and sort of clean up and sketch even more so that it can be easier to add in the final lining. I went over my rough sketches and added more definition and shapes to my model and things weren't looking the best. I struggled a lot with symmetry, and I know I could have mapped it out a lot better by drawing out a template or simply using the ruler tool on Photoshop, but I didn't because I'm an idiot and thought things would just work out. Also, I didn't know what to do with the mouth. I didn't know whether I needed to leave it open, closed, or both on separate layers in preparation for the rigging. Keep in mind that I've never rigged anything in my life before, and it's going to be my first time using Live 2D to add movement to a model. So I didn't know what kind of preparation I needed to do in Photoshop prior to my rigging. Here, I was just adding in the final lining and seeing what else I could add. I tried to make her face as round and smooth as possible, but as you can see, it didn't turn out the best, but that's okay. For her eyebrows, I wanted them to be sort of scratchy and undefined, so I was experimenting with ways I could do that. Then I had to outline her body. At first, I was just gonna put a plain old t-shirt on his model. But then I thought Senpaku eyes would look really good with armor. I don't know why, but that was my thought process during the time. So I made her shoulders a bit rounder and wider so that I can add on the armor during the coloring phase. Now that I was done with the final lining, the next step was to add in color. I knew I wanted to make a model that had red hair, so I went for a lot of variation in that aspect. But as you can see, I went through some problems. Some of my lines weren't completely closed, meaning that if I used the bucket tool, the entire page would be painted. So I had to go through each individual layer and close some of the lines that I missed. This would come back and haunt me during the rigging process because I'm stupid and didn't do a good enough job here, which I'll show you when we get there. Okay, this is my final result. By the way, I have no idea how to shade, so don't laugh. I tried my best, okay? But hey, the armor didn't turn out too bad. It looked pretty good for my standards. But now it was time to get out the plate, get some broccoli, change into my big boy pants, and get to work. But nothing could have prepared me for what was about to come. This bologna sandwich was so good. Oh wait, sorry. A rigging, yeah, yeah, rigging, rigging. So my first impressions of 2D Live was, well, it was overwhelming. It reminded me a lot of when I first used Photoshop or Premiere Pro. Whenever you use a new program for the first time, it's always going to be intimidating. So what I like to do when I start a new software is to just play around with everything. You know, simple things as seeing what certain switches do, what kind of options I'm given, what happens if I drag this here, just overall getting a really good feeling of what I'm working with. Now, of course, that can only get you so far. And I knew at my level, I needed a lot more guidance. 
and that's when I came across a channel named Fenrin. She has lots of videos on how to navigate your way around Live 2D, she has tutorials, examples, and without her help, I probably wouldn't be able to do this. If any of you guys are interested in rigging for yourself, I highly recommend watching her videos, so I'll leave her channel in the description. The first thing that I did was attempt to rig the eyes. I'm not sure if that's where you're supposed to start, but I wanted to make sure those were done first because I think eyes are the most important thing to a model. But in order to do that, I had to learn what mesh was. To my limited knowledge, mesh is the basic skeletal structure of your design. All these individual dots that you see here, you can actually move them. It allows you to rotate, move, bounce, and rig your model so that it can portray the tiniest movements. Now, Live2D has two options for mesh structure. There's an auto feature that makes the mesh for you, or you can manually assign each mesh dot to your model. At first, I wanted to use the manual mesh tool, but I was using it entirely wrong here. You see, I was using the mesh tool the same way I would use a pen tool in Adobe After Effects. I thought all you had to do was surround the eye with mesh and you would be able to close it by simply dragging down the dots. But as you can see here, it turned out to be a mess. And that's because the mesh tool makes this web-like structure that you can use to add more intricate movements. But as a beginner, this was overwhelming. I had no idea what to do, I was lost, but I was still determined. I needed to find a more simple way to make my face blink. So after hours of trying different ways of rigging and using different tools, I found that it was easier for me to combine both the pen tool and the mesh tool to get a pretty decent result. But before that, I had to learn about parameters. Parameters are sort of like your timeline, and by timeline I mean what your model would look like if they look left, right, up, and down. So for the blinking animation, we are specifically going to look at the parameters eye open and eye smile. I didn't use eye smile at all because I think those parameters are meant to be used for more detailed rigging. And I just wanted to make a simple eye blink, so I focused more on eye open parameters. Parameters are made up of keyframes, or as Live2D likes to call it, keyforms. For blinking in particular, you only need to set two forms. One for when the eyes open, which we already have, and another for when your eyes close. So all I have to do in regards to parameters is set my keyform to zero, and now I'm in position of what my model would look like if she closes her eyes. That's basically what parameters are. It's the timeline of direction. And that took so long to get around my head. I just couldn't understand this concept, but I finally did. Okay, back to the technique I was using to rig. To explain, I'm going to reference what I did for my eyebrows as an example. First, I would use the auto mesh tool, but instead of trying to motion each dot individually, I found that I could just use the pen tool to move an abundance of them at a time. This is only possible because technically this isn't a pen tool, but rather a paving tool. And I didn't realize this until I got to this point. I wasn't supposed to encapsulate the entire eyebrow with the pen, but rather use the pen to control a section of mesh. Which is why you see me adding these pen dots across my eyebrows instead of circling around it like I did previously on my eyes. And with that, for the first time, I was able to see some sort of progress in my rigging. And it felt good. But you remember when I said that I would eventually run into some problems because I got lazy in the Photoshop stage? Well, she doesn't have a fucking head. I didn't even finish her head, like what? And on top of that, my layers weren't even separated correctly. We have two eyes, two eye bags, and two eyebrows. But you know what I still did? I put each pair on the same layer. So every time I would try to rig one of them, it was like, oh, let's just rig two eyes at the same time with the same mesh. I look fucking goofy, man. And you probably saw my dumbass doing this earlier until I figured it out hours and hours later. But it's okay. It all worked out. I went back into Photoshop, fixed my layers, and now here's me doing the final touches of my blink.
And with that, I was done with the blink. Now the only thing left to do was to rig the head and the mouth, and since it's a similar process, it didn't take as long. Now the only tricky part was that the head rigging needed three keyforms for the horizontal movements, left, neutral, and right, and three keyforms for the vertical movements, up, neutral, and down. That didn't take me too long to figure out since it was pretty straightforward to work within the X and Y components of my parameters. And for the mouth, it was exactly the same as my eyes, only needing two keyforms, one for its opening and one for its closing. And this is the final product. Now let's put this in VTuber Studios and see what this looks like. It works. It works. I'm looking left, right, left, right. <laughs> Bro, this is so cool. When I blink, it blinks too, man. That's that's insane. I did this. I made this. Okay, let's go play some games. Bro, this is the best game ever created. If you if you disagree, you're wrong. You're you you're just wrong, bro. This is this is literally the best game ever created. I know what you're thinking. This is fucking dirt. This is trash. But they said the same thing to Picasso. Hey, I don't care what you say, the crossbow is the best weapon. I don't care. I, I know a lot of people don't like it, but I like it. I haven't played this game in so long. I think they added like a new area. Oh, they did. Oh, dang. Okay. You know, I've been wanting to make a VTuber model for years now, but I just couldn't bring myself to start. And I know exactly why. It was my low self-esteem and my lack of confidence as an artist that dragged me down. I've never been good at drawing, painting, or any other forms of art, but I still wanted to try. And making this model made me realize that, whoa, I can actually do this too. I may have created the most hideous and cursed model in existence, but it's something that I made. 